Hey guys, we're Ian and Anna, and in this video, we're going to share the top six things to do in the Dolomites. Let's waste no time and jump right into number six, Lago di Bryce. Because we were in the Dolomites from October 18th to November 6th, we saw the leaves change to these spectacular colors and even got to see the region's first snowfall. On our last few days of our trip, we stayed at a campsite 20 minutes away from Lago di Bryce called Camping Olympia. And to our surprise, we woke up one morning to a bunch of snow, and as you can see, our kittens absolutely loved it. If you are doing a road trip through the Dolomites, we will make sure to link all the campsites we stayed at down in the description below for you guys. From our campsite, we drove 20 minutes through a winter wonderland to one of Italy's most beautiful lakes. When you arrive, you'll have to pay for parking and walk about 5 minutes to the most famous spot that all of you have probably seen on social media. Just a heads up, high season in the Dolomites is from July to September and there may be some restrictions on parking during this time. Usually they will close the road leading to the lake from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. so I would highly suggest getting to the lake for sunrise before the road closes. One good thing about high season though is getting to not only see the rowboats docked but even take them out on the lake for the most epic views and photos. Because this place has skyrocketed in popularity, the price for 30 minutes on a rowboat is 50 euros which is pretty steep. Because we visited in November, the boats were already out of the water, but because it snowed, the lake looked like a movie surrounded by snow-covered trees and massive snow-capped peaks. We also only saw about 10 people the entire time we were there, so going during off-season definitely has some advantages. We only roamed around for about an hour because it was super cold, but there are some awesome hikes around the lake if you are interested in making it a fuller day trip. Next, let's move on to number 5, St. Magdalena. This small village with a population of less than 400 people is one of the most photographed spots in the Dolomites. This is because St. Magdalena is home to two tiny churches with a backdrop that will blow your mind. We came here for sunset and immediately made the 30 minute walk up a hill to the viewpoint of St. Magdalena Church. We were stunned at the amount of photographers up here waiting for the perfect shot as the sun was going down. Sadly, we got really unlucky because the clouds were hiding the mountains behind the church, but if you're lucky, this is what you're really supposed to see. We didn't give up hope. The next day, we went to the even more famous San Giovanni Church, and the clouds were still covering most of the mountains. I will say this spot is still 100% worth it even if there are clouds because the churches are in such unique places like this wide open meadow surrounded by picturesque rolling hills. When you go, make sure to respect the locals that live here because they are super overwhelmed by the recent influx of tourism that social media has brought upon their village and also droning is not allowed so the videos you see here are stock footage before it became illegal to drone. Up next, we have number 4, the Jiao Mountain Pass. If you didn't know, Ian and I shipped our van from the USA to Europe, and one of our favorite things we've done during our time over here is drive along scenic mountain passes with our van. One road in particular that blew us away before the Dolomites was called the Furka Pass, located in Switzerland. If you're planning to visit Switzerland, we created eight different videos that will help you plan the perfect trip, so definitely check those out after this video. But anyways, driving on the Furka Pass with our own van made us crave even more mountain passes and that is what led us to go down the Giao Pass in the Dolomites. This road is around 12 and a half miles long or 20 kilometers. It leads you through hairpin turns and some of the most dramatic views you will ever see. We drove this on November 1st and the fall leaves were at their absolute peak. Being surrounded by thousands of golden larches combined with the snow made this road extremely unique. If you're thinking about renting a camper van and road tripping the Dolomites, this is your sign to do it because wow, was it a once in a lifetime drive. Now coming up next is number three, Elpe di Susi. One of the most iconic places in the Dolomites, Elpe di Susi, also known as Sizerelm in German, is the largest high altitude alpine meadow in Europe. There are two ways to get up here. First, you can take your rental car or camper van like us and drive up the beautiful winding roads to the top. We stayed at a campsite nearby called Sizerelm Camping and it only took 25 minutes to reach the top. Although the campsite was expensive, we 100% recommend it because it was the nicest one we stayed at during our time in Europe. And with that view of the mountain, it really can't be beat. The road up to Alpe de Suzy closes from 9am to 5pm unless you are staying at a hotel up at the top. So that means you need to drive up before 9am to be able to visit with your car, so try not to be late. At the top, they have parking in Kampach, and from there you can go on some breathtaking hikes. If you're not driving though, you can take the cable car to the top, which costs 27 euros for a round trip ticket. And once you get off the cable car at the top, the view of the wide open meadow will leave you speechless. 
It seriously felt like a fairy tale with the jagged peaks surrounding this endless meadow filled with roaming horses, llamas, sheep, and cows. From the cable car, we started an eight mile loop trail that goes around the meadow and the views were just ridiculous. But it started to rain about 40 minutes into the walk and we stumbled upon this really cool mountain hut called Sanin. It was the coziest little place to get a beer and lunch while we waited for the rain to pass. If you do visit this mountain hut, definitely try out the soup there. Oh my gosh, so good. Because the rain only got worse, we decided to call it quits on the hike and head back to our van to relax a little bit before sunset. And right when the rain cleared, we decided to drive our van up the winding road surrounding the meadows to the coolest viewpoint of the entire region in our opinion. Most people walk to the spot for photography, so I will make sure to link this exact GPS location in the description below for you guys. Because it was off season, there weren't any cars driving through, so we decided to park our van on the road and take in the views with our back tours open. This is one of those moments we will never forget, especially because we got to experience it with our three little kittens. LPD Susie is a must visit on your trip to the Dolmites, even in winter time, because this whole place turns into an epic ski resort. Now let's move on to number two. Lake Federa. Federa Lake is worth visiting year round, but one huge reason to visit in October is the golden larches surrounding the lake. You also get to drive through the iconic Jiao Mountain Pass on your way to the hike. After driving on one of the most beautiful roads in Europe, you'll park at the trailhead on the side of the road and then you will hike up two and a half miles to the lake. If you have the time, you can do one of the best day hikes in the Dolomites called Croda del Lago that has Federa Lake included. This is an 8 mile round trip loop that will take roughly 5 hours but we didn't have the time so we decided to just hike to the lake instead. The first part of the hike is pretty easy as you walk through a lush forest and pass over several bridges but wow is it gorgeous. After 30 minutes it starts to have a very steep incline until you reach the top and let me tell you it was not easy even though it's a short hike this one will have you totally out of breath by the time you make it to the top. But once you see that lake, it's a thousand percent worth it. We got up there right when the sun was going down and the reflection on the lake was spectacular. I mean, do you see all those golden larches leading up to the mountain hut and the gigantic Croda del Lago snow covered peaks? Because we came in November, the mountain hut was closed. However, if you come during normal months, you can grab a bite to eat or enjoy a coffee with an amazing view. You can also spend the night in the mountain hut from June to October. We spent about an hour up here walking around the lake, getting to see all the different perspectives. And if you are coming up here for sunset, make sure to bring a headlamp. We hiked down the entire way in the dark and it was quite the experience. Up next, we have number one, the Sacheda Ridge. The Sacheda mountain range is one of the most recognizable in the Dolomites because of its massive jagged ridges towering over the villages of Val Gardena. This will definitely be one of the highlights of your trip because when you get off that cable car, you can't believe what you're looking at. It feels like you're on a totally different planet. To get up to Sacheda, you will park your car in Ortise and pay 40 euros for a round trip ticket to the top. We thought that was super expensive for a cable car ride, but it's worth it, so don't even give it much thought. At the top, you only have to walk 20 minutes to reach the foot of Sacheda's ridgeline. And along the way, paragliders were whizzing past our heads, gliding along the ridgeline, and the valley below was just breathtaking. When we arrived at the foot of the ridgeline, the clouds started wrapping around the peaks and it felt like we were at the edge of the world. There are some major hikes along the ridge, but sadly the cable car closed at 4.30pm, so we had to head back down before sunset. I wish we had more time up here because I couldn't get enough of these views. From May to the end of October, the cable car only stays open for one more hour until 5.30 p.m. So we highly suggest staying at a mountain hut or hotel at the top to take in the sunset from up here. Or if you're an avid hiker, you can just hike down in the dark after sunset. What's so cool about a lot of places we talked about like El de Susi and Sacheda is that these places turn into ski resorts during winter time. We are dreaming of coming back one day to the Dolmites to snowboard because these mountains are one of a kind. Yeah.